Hi, fourth year. So I just want to talk to you for a couple of minutes about this book design project and then hopefully get you thinking a little bit more sideways about what you've designed so far and getting a little bit more creativity going on in your designs. So I'm just out here at my bookshelf looking at a few books. Think about layout. Think about the spine. This is why I'm showing you the spine. This particular author, Robin Hobb, who I absolutely love, she's a fantasy writer. Um, Game of Thrones style type thing but it's just incredible anyway she always her book designs always have a little image down the spine here bee feather bee ship but uh, horse um, wildcat you know different images that relate to the story there's the horse there there's the raven dragon okay so you know is this something that you could do lettering image lettering Will your lettering be going down the way or going across the way? Probably down because your spine is a bit thinner, but who knows? Maybe your letters could come down this way instead, but, you know, facing this way, but coming down this way. You know, think about the layout. Um, think about, you know, the logo for the publisher. Choose a publisher, get a logo going on there. So they're all abacus. So think about other ones. You can look online. Penguin's a popular one. This one here, can't remember what it's called. Can't remember what these are all called. Paragon, is it? Or no, HarperCollins. Think about this. This is quite important. Choose a publisher and get that printed out and stuck onto your book. If you can print, that's amazing. Really, really amazing. Otherwise, just hand draw. Okay. Um, think about how the image runs from the front to the back. And we've done a lot of looking at this kind of thing. You know, you guys have just got to decide for yourself how you're going to make this work. But the image on the front and the image on the back, are they going to link somehow? Or the image on the front and the side, are they going to link somehow? He's not got much going on on the back. You know, chocolat, it's about chocolate. Oh, lovely. Chocolate eggs in a basket. And then because it's set in Paris, Parisian things down the bottom there. Okay, on the back, again, Parisian things, grapes, the woman, barcode. Don't forget the barcode. Think about the text. I don't want you to have a massive long rant on the back, like a, a huge um, outline of the book, because we won't really have space for that. But a little tagline, try me, test me, taste me, Okay. Tagline. I've already spoken to you about taglines and about how you can use these. Or, see, uh, a quote from someone who's giving in a review. Stunning. This novel is an immense achievement by the observer. The observer's written that. Okay, so that's something else I need you to have on there. So tagline, barcode, um, recommendation by a famous person, publisher's logo, Okay, and then on the front, obviously, we have our images, our author's name as well. Okay, are you going to be really simplistic in your design cutout? Or are you going to be a little bit more um, illustrative? Okay, with a bit more detail. So, so much for you to think about. So much. And I want you to be thinking today when I'm showing you my little... Uh, a little bit of a example that I've been doing through here. So this is our music room and this is my art room where I come to draw and paint. Got some stuff ready there to show you. Um, this is where I've been doing demonstrations. I'm very lucky I've got a little room with a sink and lots of stuff. A sewing machine that doesn't work. Anyway, next I'm going to show you something here um, to do with the design that one of the other people's has made and see if we can take it a bit further. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go through quickly the different things that we need you to have, you need to have on your book cover. Okay, so firstly, imagery. And how is that going to be laid out? Now, I know you've done a lot of this in school so far. I understand that. But some of us are much further ahead than others. So if you haven't done some drawings of how you want your images to be laid out, linking to the cut collage that you've done already, then you should have that by now. I mean, this is the type of stuff I've been asking for you, sorry, asking of you since about October time. 
So you should have two layout examples so far. If you haven't, get them drawn. You should have the the background sheet with the rectangles on it, so the layout sheet, so you can put that on. If you haven't got that, you'll just need to try and draw boxes by you know looking at my examples in a minute and going from there. So imagery, layout, um, you need, the words that you need are obviously author and title. And you'll need to think which of these should be bigger, how should they be laid out, which is more important, what do you think, which is longer, which is shorter. How will that have an effect on how it's going to be presented or how you want it to be laid out, the length of these words. You need your tagline. So tagline, a little reminder, is a little sentence that tells you a bit about the book. So if it was a fiction book, it might be that one I just showed you a minute ago. Whatever it was about chocolat, it was see it, eat it or smell it or something. I, I can't remember now. But um, a tagline explaining a, a little bit about the story, even just a sentence, a phrase. Uh, you might have also... If that, sorry, that's if it's fiction. If it's for non-fiction, like something like a baking book, um, it might be just a sentence saying, find all your favourite recipes here or something. You're going to have to do some research. It's not difficult. You just need to look online at books, book covers. I mean, we've been doing this for months now, so I'm sure you should have some ideas for that. Um, recommendations. They're the ones that I told you about, which, you know, it's some famous person saying something like, whoa, best book I've ever read, and then the name of the person underneath, which might sway you to buy the book. If you see one of your favourite superstars has endorsed this book and said, this is an amazing book, it might make you a little bit more um, likely to want to buy it, okay? So that's something else to think about, recommendations. You need your barcode, and you need your publisher's logo. Now, I've just had a complete hissy-tizzy fit at my computer downstairs because I've got this new MacBook and it will not let me print out a picture of the logo. I've been trying for about 15 minutes to print out a Penguin logo. Do you think I can do it? No, I can't do it. It let me print out a barcode happily, but it would not do this other thing. So I've got a few things that I can show you in a minute, but I don't have everything I wanted. Anyway, hopefully you'll get the idea once I've gone through... Um, this example, okay? So here's a whole lot of things you need to be thinking about. We'll just pop these here. And what I'm gonna do now is just talk to you about uh, this pupil example that I found. Now, I don't know whose it is, but it's a lovely example. This is their first um, attempt at doing layouts. In my mind, she's not one of my pupils, so I don't know, but I think this is her first attempt. So what she's got here, she's doing a cake book. Cake, cake, eat cake eat cake in a different way. She's put swirls going across from one side to the other, or lines, and she's deciding to make this cover, if you can imagine it, shut this book, read from the front, over the spine, and through to the back. This one's very different. She's made a frame on the back out of cutlery that she can perhaps put taglines or recommendations inside. This one, it's more of a plain space, okay? We've got space for the title and the author on the spine. We've got a barcode, barcode. We've got space here for a publisher's logo. She's not got on yet, but that's fine. Here and here. Okay, so this to me looks like the kind of first attempt at getting some layouts for this baking book. And then, as you all did, we did a cut paper collage. And she's done a cut paper collage of a... What is that? A cupcake. <laughs> My head went completely to pot there. Brain's gone out to grass. Yeah, cupcake type thing. OK, so she's taken a cake and she's made a cut paper collage. Then it seems to me that she's taken that cut paper collage and she's tried it again. So she's getting a little bit more definition. If you look at the cake here and the cake here, these stand out so much more. They're really striking, bold, clear cut. I think that use of the tone is just beautiful. Really makes this more, so much more successful. OK, once you've taken it through from a drawing to a cut, a cut paper collage. Now, you all should have one of these because we did these back in September. If you haven't got one, it's because you didn't finish it. And I have been asking you for months to finish these. Here's a nice example. And so what she's done is she's 
photographed her cut paper collage and then she's printed it out and she's cut it out around the edge. And luckily she seems to have a printer at home so she's able to print out some text as well. And so we've got two different ideas of how the text could be a hand drawn one and a printed one. OK, it is certainly true that if you can print out at home, it is going to be easier for you because what you could do is try printing out different sorts of text, different sizes, different styles, different colours. And then you could cut these out and add them into your design and try lots of different ways of doing it. Last week, I asked you to actually create a Word document of different fonts. Here is an example. This is what you should have all done last week. It was your second task of the day, I think, last week. The first task was to photograph your design work so far. And I have to say, I really, I, to be honest, getting very, very frustrated with this. I can't make you post this stuff. I can't make you do it. But looking on the teams, very few people have done this so far. But your first task was to photograph what you'd done for design, making sure that you've got your drawings in the assignment which said drawing, uh, design drawing assignment. OK, and the other assignment was the cut paper collage, making sure that's all in there so I can look at it. And then I also asked you to do a and this was a double period, a word document using the title of your book in different fonts, different colours and so on. OK, that was made very clear to you last Tuesday. This person's done it there and then therefore she's able to cut some out and put them into her design. She's moving forward. So what I want to do with you just now for a couple of minutes is show you how I would take this design a little bit further forward. So if we just move this all out of the way, what I've done is I've taken her little cupcake. OK, and I copied it, photocopied it, and I've got that ready. I'm going to stick that on in a minute. And then I looked at the different images that she had and I tried to create a little bit of a move on with the design. So what did she have in hers? Well, she had drippy chocolate coming down or drippy frosting of some sort. So I thought, right, I'm going to use that drippiness. But rather than keeping it just on one side of the book, I'm going to see if I can take it across the spine and across to the back. OK, she also had a couple of slices of very tasty Battenberg. Here it is. Battenberg cake, that cake that's like checkers here. I saw that and I thought, right, I'm going to use that. This is something else that this girl's drawn. I looked at everything she had. I looked at the forks and spoons and the cherry and the plate. And I thought, what could I use further in this design? So I thought, how about we take the Battenberg idea and put it on the back and blow it up really big. And my idea was to pop some text inside here. And I thought, let's bring the frosting over and then looking like it's dripping over part of this cake and then going down behind. OK, so everything on this sheet so far has come from the students work that I've been showing you, but it's just moved on just a little bit more. And I thought to myself, maybe this could go here. And then I started thinking about the, um, the typeset. I'm thinking, OK, eat cake could be done graphically on the computer. But how about I put the author of the book in hand drawn writing to complement the frosting that's there? So I thought, Mary Berry, nice and short. And I'll try and put it in the same sort of style as that drippy frosting. So you might be able to see that took me quite a few attempts because it was quite tricky to make it fit. But you have to be willing to give up that time and rub it out and try again and rub it out and try again. I had to rub that out three times before I made it fit. And I wanted the wire to come and drip down into this frosting. So it looks like it's dripping down the page. OK, so I spent some time on that. Um, and then after that, I got some recommendations from some very famous people. Um, well, I think they're famous. Boom, boom. Is that a basil brush? <laughs> So what's going to happen now is I'm going to put my recommendations in here. Get a little print stick. And I'm lucky I can print at home. If you can't print, you just have to hand draw. OK, here's my recommendations. So Basil Brush, he says, yum, about that cake book. He thinks it's amazing. Kylie thinks it's decadently delicious. Here we go. So Kylie, that's going to fit in there. See, when I saw the Battenberg cake, I just saw the squares and I thought it just looks like a perfect space to put some some text into. Yeah, 
Maybe you're getting me. Tasty as hell. Gordon Ramsay thinks it's tasty as hell. And by the way, yeah, this took quite a long time to figure out. And as you can see, it doesn't quite fit inside my Battenberg there. It's, you know, I had to print this several times to try and get the text right. And I, I had to think about the text. So the actual quotes themselves are in bold. And then the name of the person who's made the quote, they're just in um, lowercase and not bold. So the, these just different bits of information stand out. If they were all the same style and the same thickness and everything, they wouldn't stand out so well. Now, Joey Essex, he thinks that this book is very easy to follow, which would be helpful for him, I think. There we go, easy to follow. And then I've put my text, I've made sure that I've kept that nice and parallel. So there's the bottom of the cake and here's the text going up the way, see? If it went squint, it would just look awful. So that's starting to look a little bit more like a book cover now, the back of the book cover. Let's just put the little barcode on. So I think I'm gonna put mine, you can decide. There goes my print stick. So middle, yeah, I think I quite fancy it there in the corner, quite like that. <clears throat> and I think what I'm gonna do now is just put a little bit of colour into that. So because I've stuck that down with Pritt stick and it's all just normal paper, I can quite easily paint over the top of that. And in this student version, the Battenberg is pink and yellow. And I've got myself a set of paints here and I'm gonna very lightly work some paint over. Now, of course, coloured pencil would be just as easy, if not a little bit easier because I don't know how well my paint will go over the top of my printing, but that's just what I'm gonna find out by doing it. So let's just see. It's a little bit of pink over here. Yeah, okay, so the ink might start running a bit. This is the kind of thing you work out by doing. Doesn't bother me, that's fine. This is just development, okay? So we're trying to work out how it would look. So here's my pink over the top of that one. Nice and simple. And then it would be yellow over the other ones. And then I can maybe put pink and yellow and pink and yellow in here. Um, and you can see how fast this is. I don't want to spend, you know, two hours putting just a little bit of colour over a tiny little bit of cake. You need to try and figure out ways of being a little bit immediate um, and gutsy with it. So here we go. And yeah, it does dull down the text a little bit, but that's okay. Because once it's dry, you could maybe go over the fine liner or something like that and try and bring some of that. Whoops, why did I put that yellow there? Bring some of that to life a bit more. But then you might ruin the sort of the sort of computer generated font look of it. So don't know. OK, and then you could carry on and do that up there. All right. So there you go. That's starting to look a little bit more like a book cover now. And then I might stick that there or maybe I would paint this first and then stick that down. Um, paint this, paint all this first, uh, maybe do all the, the, the chocolate and think so carefully about your colour choices. I can't emphasise that enough. I'm putting pink and yellow in here. It would be a mistake to suddenly start bringing in blues, greens, purples, browns. You know, I've already got a bit of a colour scheme going on here, pink and yellow. And then over here, we've got some reddishy colours and then yellowy colours. OK, so we've got yellow, red, pink, brown. That's already part of the, the, the scheme. Yeah. So let's not go any more than that and try and keep the rest of it to that scheme. So it might be that this is all chocolate and different shades of brown and, and uh, kind of like toned with glossy bits and so on. And then maybe this is just going to be left as pure white. Yeah, because obviously that wouldn't look good if it was on like a, a black background or something. I mean, to be honest, to be perfectly honest, I do love that on the blue. I think it looks great, but I'm not sure. Well, you know, this is an aesthetic decision to make. Maybe the royal blue would be really gorgeous under there with that on the top. <laughs> I'm going to eat my words as well as cake. I'm thinking that could look stunning, a really strong royal blue. I might just do that and show you what I come up with.
So this is what I've done so far with my book cover. I decided to put the blue in. It's a bit patchy. I need to go back in. This is the thing about these um, these disc paints is once you do one layer and it's dried, it's it can be difficult to go back over it because the underneath layer comes back through again. So I've just let that dry. I might even touch it up with a little bit of colour pencil. But I decided to change the tone of the blue because I thought that striking strong blue down the spine and also on the back cover might just be a bit dark. The whole book might be a bit dark. So I decided to change the tone mid blue for the spine and then the pale blue for the back cover. Um, the chocolate, you can see that what I've done with the chocolate is I've toned it. So I've used my brown paint um, and it was very fiddly. That's why I had to stop the film because I needed to get so close to the, the cover because I'm going slightly blind in my old age. Oh, um, it means my head was in the way of the camera. So there you go. I've toned um, the brown the best I can with paint. Okay, so I've gone from dark to light, also because I thought the dark brown up against the dark blue would just be far too dark. So I've toned the dark brown down to light. And then as I went across, I decided to just keep it flat brown just to see what would happen. Sort of keep a little bit of a contrast there. So the back cover was a bit more simplistic. Um, Mary Berry, I've gone over her, I've left her white page and painted around her and then I've gone over her with a bit of white pencil and then I put her name on the spine and white pencil. My intention was to reduce the size of the Eat Cake um, name here and put it sideways down here, but I haven't had time. I've already spent quite a few hours on this um, and I need to get this stitched together and uploaded before your lesson this afternoon, so I, I haven't had time. I've got my little penguin logo on down there though. So quite a lot of it coming together now. The other thing that I could add into this would be obviously the eat cake here and then down the bottom here, maybe a little bit of a tagline for the book or it could be up here in white text, um, a little bit of a description. You know, I didn't I didn't do that. Well, when I say description, you know what I mean, a short phrase or sentence just to do with um, what the book is about. OK, so there you go. That's how it's all come together. And if you look at these things all sort of uh, leading from one to the next, it starts to make sense, I think. You can see all of this and then this down the bottom. You can imagine all that chopped out would make quite an interesting sheet. OK, go for your lives. Let me know if you need anything. So some of us are doing book covers, some of us are doing posters. Book covers, I've got loads of books at home. Posters, don't have quite so many. Um, I did have a load, but I can't seem to find them. So this is a table I've got that I've pasted with different things that I've collected over the years. There's a Beck poster there. If we think about what a poster is supposed to do, it advertises a place or an event. OK, so people looking at the poster want to be able to get that information quite quickly. And you see from this Beck poster, sorry, I can't turn the camera sideways, it's the landscape, but you can see this thin Beck poster in the middle. You've got up the top here, um, Camden something presents. So I can't quite read that because it's got a bit mashed up, but it's to do with the company that are presenting Beck. You've got Beck's name, you've got an image of Beck, you've got the date, Thursday the May the 4th, 2000. You've got the place, Cafe Tagup or something like that. And then you've got the town, Santa Barbara. OK, so you've got the information that you need um, for a music poster. You would probably have a website, Facebook page, Instagram, something like that. Logos on posters are going to be great. So those of you doing um, posters, think about putting in Instagram little symbols. You can easily print that off. If you can't print, you know, we can do a lot of this when we get back to school. So you don't have to hand draw. I mean, you can do for your initial drawings, but I think when it comes to the solution, definitely we'll be back at school by then, surely. And we can um, print these things out and make a really good, good, you know, decent, professional looking finish. If you can print at home, brilliant. Go and do it. OK, so there you go. There's a Beck poster. I'm just trying to see what else um, I've got here. Uh, yeah, Pearl, so you've got, what have you got here? Victoria Hall, oh no, that's the jam. So you've got the name of the band, Pearl Jam, you've got the logo, you've got the town, Berlin, Germany, you've got information here, where it is, date, okay? So what you need to do for your poster is you just need to decide 
um, what information you need. These are all event posters. So, you know, they're advertising a particular event, Osric Tennis Claws, image, patterns and all that, and then date, place, city, doors open 8.30, show 9 p.m., all ages, and then it's got foxtheatre.com, it's got a website down there. Okay, so, you know, you just need to decide what you need to put on yours. Okay, and I'm gonna go and just do a little list of things that you could include, like I have done, or I will do, whichever order I put this video into, on my um, doodle. <laughs> Home working, eh? On my book cover design video, okay. So not wanting poster people to be left out, because I know I focused on book cover for this video, but it's very similar techniques, okay? But not wanting the poster people to be left out, um, let's do a list here of what you would need. So imagery, obviously, is the first thing. And I'm thinking of people that have done Deep Sea World. It's exactly the same thing. What images and how are you going to lay out? Okay. And then, obviously, you don't need author title. What do you need? You need name of thing <laughs> you are advertising. Okay. That means advertising. Because it might be a place, Deep Sea World, for example. It might be an event, okay, a band poster, for example. What else? Well, because well, it all depends on what you've all done. I understand different people have done different things. I'm trying to encompass everybody here. So place, Deep Sea World, or the dungeons, or something like that. Um, an event like the posters that I've just shown you they're probably the two main ones that we've been looking at doing um, could possibly be um, a film or uh, so it could be a film or series because you know that we've seen the Netflix one um, the Stranger Things one that I showed you back in class okay so this is what you will be advertising so you obviously don't need a title what you need instead is how can you act on this? So if it's a place or an event, where is this place, this event? You know, where is it? If it's a film or a series, clearly you don't need where. But what you do need is where can you see it? OK, so where can you see it? If it's something like Netflix or if it's. I don't know, um, going to be on at the cinema. So could you have a cinema logo like MGM cinemas? You know, could you find the roaring line for MGM or something like that and put that on your poster? Because they're the cinema that's going to be showing it first, for example. You need to imagine this. So this is, by the way, this is all stuff you should have done. I'm going over this because we're at home. haven't seen you for ages. Um, but last term... This kind of stuff should all have been thought about. You should have taken notes. You should know what you're doing. But it's just to recap. So I have to recap myself as I'm going to. So name of the thing you're advertising. Place or film. You know, what is it? What is it? Where is it? Where can you see it? And then how can you act on it? How can you act on this? So website. Phone number, how old fashioned and quaint, Instagram, Facebook, okay, do you need a date, do you need a date, okay, if it's a film, do we need a release date, obviously if it's just advertising Deep Sea World or the dungeons, you don't need a date, because it's just there all the time, do you need opening hours, Maybe you need opening hours. Obviously, for a film, you don't need opening hours. But for a particular event or a place like Deep Sea World, you do. So you guys, hopefully, have, me having gone through that, you can see that this is in your hands. Okay, it's in your hands to work this out. And you are capable of doing that. Okay, you just need to decide upon what you need and then 
what sort of font are you going to use? Are you going to use a variety of fonts? Are you going to use one font? I think it works better if you have a variety, not too many types, but maybe just two types, for example. Um, how are you going to do that? Research it online. I told you to do that last week or hand drawing. OK. All right. In terms of how you do it, obviously, I've spent a lot of time with this one today on the video. Um, but it's the same for the poster, okay? The same kind of sort of process that you're going through. And I, I don't have another four hours to do a poster video as well as um, the book one. So, uh, you know, you're intelligent enough to be able to take this information and transpose it, I'm quite sure. Okay, over and out.